Hello and welcome to another video with me, Andrea, and this little Bob's Everest. Hello. Hello. I'm very cute. I'm very cute. <laughs> so I wanted to do a video today on bed sharing because a um, a lot of people ask me whether I co-sleep or whether Everest is in a crib or what have you, and um, now that I'm uh, more than three months in, I want to talk about my decision to bed share and how it's going. So I originally, my plan was to use a bassinet next to the bed and to um, then eventually attach her crib to our bed. And I may still do that, but we definitely did not use our bassinet. Um, we didn't buy it. It was secondhand from my uh, sister-in-law, my brother and sister-in-law. So it's not a big deal. Um, but we just, you know, it just, we never got around to using it. She, uh, you know, she did great in bed with me and I realized that it was the easiest option for us and I got the most sleep that way. So, and uh, that's one of the main reasons why we decided to co-sleep or bed share was because um, I've heard from so many women that you get so much more sleep because with a crib or um, just a separation of the mom and the baby, um, when they get up, you have to like get up. You have to get out of bed. You have to get them out of wherever they're sleeping. They fully wake up and by that point usually, and it takes longer to get them back down to sleep. And it's more of a sleep issue. Whereas with bed sharing and with co-sleeping, but mostly with bed sharing, you know, she'll start to stir and she won't open her eyes, but she'll just kind of be like, mm -hmm. and I will wake up, pop my boob in her mouth and I'll fall back asleep and she'll fall back asleep and that's it. So, um, it really makes a huge difference. I don't have to get up out of bed. She doesn't wake up, she stays asleep, so, you know, it's easier to get her, you know, to stay asleep, and that has been the largest reason why, uh, sleep. But apart from that, there are lots of reasons why bed sharing is a great choice for every family, um, specifically my family. I don't think there's anything wrong with not bed sharing, but I think there's a lot of things right with it. So, um, with bed sharing. So, biologically, at, you know, we are animals, whether we like to admit it or not, and we have evolved. And when you think about evolution, um, back when there were lots of dangers for our, for Neanderthals and for like early humans, Evolutionary wise, uh, it made more sense for a baby to need to be carried all the time, right? Because if by chance their parent put them down and they just, you know, casually were fine being put down um, and left, uh, chances are that they could be eaten or exposed to elements, all different things. So. For in our, it is evolution, it is built into humans through evolution to not be put down as infants. The baby knows that their chance of survival increases if they are always near their main caregiver. So the, it makes sense that when a baby is put down and left, they get upset because they're going, hey, don't leave me for some, you know, wild animal to eat me. <laughs> But, um, so second of all, there's the chemicals and brain development. So unlike other mammals, babies are born without fully developed brains. Like you'll see, um, a cow or a, a horse give birth and within the first few hours and at least the first day, the baby starts to walk, right? 
and shows independence, not full independence, but it's able to do things for themselves. Um, sorry, not it. He or she is able to do things for themselves. Everest and all other human babies, they're not there. They need us. And so their, um, their functioning depends greatly on our functioning. They have shown that babies' um, breathing patterns, their blood sugar levels, um, their cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone, are all greatly impacted by their connection to their mother. So we're kind of like, a, we're one, you know, for so long we were literally one, now we're figuratively one, but her functioning depends highly on my presence. Um, so it, there's reasons why when mom leaves or when dad leaves, baby kind of freaks out because they're going, I need those people to function. They help me regulate different systems in my body. So that's another huge reason. And I mentioned cortisol and that's a huge, uh, huge one. Cortisol is, uh, released naturally in all of us, but in different levels depending on the stress that we're under. So when you're in a high stress situation, your body releases cortisol and it can impact um, brain development in babies. So if they have these high levels of cortisol and their brain is developing with them in it, they're more likely to have anxiety and depression and ADHD and all of them, basically all mental illnesses, the risks of having them increase based off of the levels of cortisol that they're releasing in early infancy. So, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, let your baby cry. They won't remember this or whatever. And you're right. They won't literally remember it, but their brain remembers it and their brain remembers when I needed someone there, there wasn't someone there. And so they make different connections in their brain based off of that. And it can lead to um, them developing relationships differently in adulthood. So yes, no, they won't go, I remember the day I cried in my crib and no one came and got me. They won't, they won't know that, but their brain will have developed based off of that experience. These early days and these first few months and weeks are so, so tough. I can't even, there's no way to describe it. Unless you're a parent, you have no idea. But they're so important. So you really, and that's why they're tough, right? And so it's just, you know, it's been such an important bonding experience for her to know Every day, every night, whenever she needs me, I'm there for her. And that is why we decided to bed share. And if you have any questions about it and want to know where I got all my info from, um, feel free to ask me in the comments. And I hope that guy that helps you. Um, in another video very soon, I'll be sharing tips on safe bed sharing because it's definitely not something you should just do willy-nilly. You should. Actually, I'll just do it now. You should um, not have extra blankets and pillows, like one blanket per adult, and just make sure that the baby is removed from it. So if they roll over, they're not going to roll into a pillow. I keep the covers from the waist down, so it's not she, she's not going to get tangled up in it. And I always make sure that she is um, on the inside of the bed. So she's never on the edge of the bed. And if she were to be on the edge of the bed, I would have rails put up or I would put my bed up against the wall. And then I would stuff things in between whatever there is, whether it's a rail or the wall, to make sure that she can't get stuck in there. Because a lot of people put their bed up against the wall and then the baby rolls into it and gets stuck in between the bed and the wall. So you really want to make sure that doesn't happen. A lot of people, what they use and what I'll probably use in the future if I ever do this is um, a swimming noodle. You know, those like long noodles with the holes in between and you can stuff it in between and put your sheet over it and it blocks them from rolling over that. 
So I hope that was helpful. And if you have any more questions or if I left something out and you think it's really important, please um, add it to the comments. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.